the cult academy begins in the year 1999. A man is running through the forest being chased by a monstrous bat-like creature. He desperately phones his superiors and requests an emergency escape teleportation. Unfortunately, the bat monster catches up to him, and only his arm makes it through the teleportation portal before it closes. We then cut to our MC, Maya Kumashiro, as she attends the funeral of her father, the principal of the so-called occult academy. Arriving at his father's funeral, Kawashima Chihiro approached him sympathizing with his deceased father. She works as the school's vice principal. During the funeral proceedings, a recording of Mr. Kumashiro's farewell message is played, in which he accidentally recites a spell that causes his corpse to become possessed by a vengeful spirit. In order to calm the panicking student population, Maya gives a speech about how the occult isn't real and the corpse reanimation is merely a trick. However, her argument is quickly subverted when the demon-possessed corpse escapes by flying through the ceiling and begins terrorizing the entire school. Fortunately, despite her earlier claims, Maya is quite knowledgeable about the occult. She identifies the spirit as a lamy, which can only be killed by decapitating its original victim. With the help of a few other students, including a goth spiritualist named JK and a lazy mechanic named Smile, she searches the school for her father's possessed corpse. After exploring each room, a female named Kazui was possessed by a spirit and began attacking, but it quickly fled and was followed by Maya. Maya finds her father. He appears to have returned to normal, apologizing to Maya for being neglectful of her. But she doesn't buy this act for a moment, and coldly decapitates him with an axe. Pondering on the day's events while watching the sunset, Maya loudly proclaims that she hates the occult with a vengeance. Just then, a pillar of light bursts forth from the heavens, bringing with it a cell phone followed by a naked goggle-wearing man. Who Maya running away from the naked man, who upon noticing his nudity desperately tries to cover himself. After escaping, she spends the night in a hotel room, where she watches a late-night variety show featuring Nostradamus prophecy speculation and spoon-bending psychic children. Tired of hearing about occult matters, Maya decides to use the naked man's cell phone to take a picture of herself, only to have the photo show a bleached skull and bone fragments. The next day, Maya uses her father's will to seize control of the occult academy and become its new principal, with the intent to destroy it. She then learns that the naked sky man, whose real name is Minoru, Ab, is the school's new Japanese history teacher. As you can imagine, Maya doesn't take this news well. Minoru explains that he's actually a time traveler from the year 2012. It seems that, thanks to the key of Nostradamus, aliens from another dimension have conquered Earth. The human resistance resolves to send operatives back in time to stop Nostradamus' prophecies from coming true and thereby save the future. Unfortunately, the first five failed to finish their mission and were killed. The sixth agent was standing in Maya's office. Minor Wave is his name. As for the mysterious cell phone, it's capable of seeing into the future via its camera function. By taking pictures of various items, Minoru can learn what influence they might have on the future, thus determining what he needs to destroy in order to prevent the invasion of Earth. Naturally, Meyer is pissed as hell to be confronted with yet another supernatural event, and she kicks them out of her office. Later that night, as she's taking a shower in her father's old mansion, she spots a shadow on the other side of the shower curtain and the words don't interfere, written on her bathroom mirror in blood. She wraps herself in a towel and looks around the house, only to be stalked by an invisible ghost who appears only when lightning strikes. Minora bursts through a window in an attempt to rescue Maya, only to receive a beatdown due to a misunderstanding. Fortunately, Minora stumbles across a secret passage which they use to escape from the encroaching ghost. Suddenly, a brick from the wall becomes displaced, revealing a bright light that vaporizes the ghost. Maya discovers the source of this light her father's journal, imbued with defensive magic to protect her. Reading the journal, Maya learns that her father was trying to stop Nostradamus' prophecies from coming true, only to be killed by a mysterious group who would rather see these prophecies fulfilled. Upon learning that her father's demise was not accidental, Maya vows to take revenge on the killers and agrees to help Minoru in his mission. There's a rumor that the demon Tengu has been seen stealing people around town, and Maya orders Minoru to search for it not because she thinks the Tengu exists, but because she thinks it may lead to the Nostradamus key. Feeling depressed and totally out of place, Minoru wanders into a local restaurant and ends up receiving exactly what he needed his favorite meal hand delivered by his dream girl. Minoru immediately strikes up a rapport with Mikazi, who offers to show him all the sights around town. Despite her demure, bashful personality, he shows up in a luxury sports car and they tour the city. While touring the massive underground Zozan bunker, Maya observes from the shadows with disdain as Minoru bonds with Mikazi as she continues on her quest to uncover the mystery of the Tengu. Both Kazui and Maya are now missing, and Minoru is sent to try and find them. Joining up with Mikazi, they uncover a secret underground passage under Minikami Mountain. 
As they explore deeper, Miru becomes spooked and runs off in complete terror, becoming separated from Mikazi, but ends up finding Maya, who has been wandering the underground bunkers in search of the mysterious Tengu. The two of them uncover a giant underground cavern, the bioluminescent lair of the Mothmen. Minoru slips and falls in a gigantic pile of crap, where he finds the cell phone of his digested agent number 5. They are attacked, both run off, and Maya castigates Minoru to do something. Minoru confesses that he's not the great heroic figure he made himself out to be. Instead, he was a poor beggar on the streets, having lost his psychic powers long ago. He was kidnapped by secret agent and sent back in time against his will. Maya gives him a look of complete disgust and disappointment, and realizes she has to take matters into her own hands. After rescuing Kazui from an aliens like Pod, they are surrounded by moth men. Minoru the coward runs away, just in time for JK and Smile to come to the rescue. Everyone else manages to escape just as hidden explosive charges bring down the caverns. Minoru still acts all brave and puffs up in front of Mikazi, who conveniently shows up at the end. But Maya has now lost all faith in him. Out of everyone at the Waldstein Academy, it seems like innocent Kazui is the only person who has not experienced any occult phenomenon with her own eyes. Desperate looking for any sign of a cult, she searches for examples of the occult. Everything Kazui brings to Maya, she thinks it's an occult, but it turns out to be normal. She volunteers in class as part of a near-death experiment. Sealed away in an altered state-style chamber, they stop her heart and monitor her thoughts, where she takes a magical mystery tour. After three minutes, she is revived but not quite the same. She now finds the occult is silly, and there's a vision of Kazui searching around for her glasses remaining on the screen afterwards. The new Kazui now finds all that talk about occult stuff is silly, and that Izami freaked out. Is this really the same person as before? Enlisting the help of Maya, the two of them try to bring back her memories by presenting her with a series of occult experiences. Nothing seems to work, and Ami asks whether they should seek the help of the teacher Minoru. Maya totally rejects the idea, having lost all confidence in him, but Minoru finds out and begins to worry about her too. Finally, Maya reluctantly asks for his help in a spoon-bending demonstration, which ultimately causes Kazui to break down in tears, even though she doesn't know why. Maya determines that she lost her occult-loving heart in the afterlife, and decides to go to the afterlife to get it. Minoru intervenes, and offers to go into the chamber in Maya's place. Minoru began his journey to the afterlife as Maya stood by and watched his past life on the big screen. Maya learns that little Minoru was never really loved by his mother. Then, through Minoru's past life, she sees the coming alien invasion's massive destructive force. Minoru must act quickly because time is running out. Minoru finds Kazui and brings her back successfully. Maya decides to make peace with Minoru and begins the quest for the Nostradamus key in earnest. When Minoru enters his apartment, he is surprised by Mikazi. Mikazi prepares him dinner and then asking him if he is free tonight. Then they went to the forest, where everyone in the neighborhood was dressed in black coats, and Mikazi kissed him unexpectedly. The next day, Maya and Minoru investigate about the mask, but they don't find anything that connects to the Nostradamus key. That night, Maya is murdered in her office. While Minoru was mourning that night, Vice Principal Chihiro appeared with the real Maya still alive. In order to prove it's really her, Maya hands over her father's special notebook to Minoru. Mikazi suddenly appeared at the window and touched Minoru's forehead, paralyzing him and destroying the notebook. Vice Principal Chihiro suddenly grabbed his earring and threw it at Mikazi and they run. She reveals her true identity as a black mage intent on bringing about hell on earth and kill Maya. The black mage caught up with them, and people dressed in black appeared out of nowhere. Vice Principal Chihiro ordered them to escape and revealed her actual identity as a white mage. Mikazi and Chihiro begin battling by casting barriers against each other while Maya and Chihiro's servant escape for safety. Mikazi summoned a monster, and Chihiro knew that he was the one who summoned the monsters to kill Maya. While Maya's friends were being blocked by dressed in black, Mikazi and Chihiro were battling, and she confessed that she was simply having fun with Minoru, and she went on to defeat Chihiro. But not before she is able to visit Minoru one last time, release him from Mikazi's spell and give him critical information. Maya leads Mikazi on a chase through town ending at the top of the occult academy where she reveals the notebook was not destroyed after all. Mikazi in her rage wrests the notebook away, but Minoru is able to retrieve it, feeding her words from a powerful spell inside the notebook. Minoru and Maya, they begin casting the spell to seal Mikazi. A yellow light starting to blast and form a star to seal Mikazi. Mire! Gratis! Mikazi has been defeated, and everything in the town has returned to normal. Minoru called his superior to tell them that the key has been found and destroyed. They ran out to see if the future had changed, but they were surprised at what they saw. The future still hadn't changed. 
After they defeat the Black Mage, Minoru tells Maya that her father is still alive, but he doesn't know where it is. Because Vice Principal Chihiro sent her away using magic. There's just two days left until closing ceremonies, which is also Armageddon Day. Maya reveals that she invited young Minoru and his mother to the closing ceremony. Minoru called his superior from the future that he wanted to see his mother and younger self. But he warned that they should not meet her younger self, because it creates a rift in space-time and causes Armageddon and Minoru himself is the Nostradamus key. However, despite eliminating the threat, the apocalyptic future has not changed. After the closing ceremonies, Minoru will return to the future. Maya was suddenly surprised when she saw young Minoru. Suddenly the cloud turned black, and a portal opened in the sky and the aliens began to emerge. The young Minoru ran towards the aliens trying to stop them but he was hit by a strong wind knocking him out. Minoru held the spoon in his hand to regain his power, and Minoru said, <laughs> He ran towards the alien and unleashed his power. All the aliens were crushed and sending them back to portal and closed. He sacrifices himself to stop the Armageddon. Maya report to Superior. The future has changed, and Maya is left to care for the younger Minoru. If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and thank you for watching.